Good afternoon. Thanks for having Oyster Point here. I'd like to thank OIS for another great meeting. What I'm going to talk to you about today, um, uh, as we are a publicly traded company, I'll give you our disclaimers first, uh, is a novel delivery of <clears throat> therapy to treat dry eye disease. So in keeping with the theme of the day, this is a preservative-free nasal spray delivered as a 50 microliter spray into the anterior portion of the nasal cavity. And what I'm going to show you today is a novel mechanism whereby it stimulates the trigeminal nerve to allow the patient to stimulate their own natural tear film. What we uh, base our thesis for this therapy on is there really is no substitute for natural tear film. Natural tear film not only contains literally thousands of proteins, but lipids, mucins, growth factors, anti-inflammatory compounds, and is also naturally bacteriostatic. This no novel delivery works on a mechanism of action that is found in the nose, so the trigeminal nerve pathway, uh, what we call the trigeminal parasympathetic pathway, stimulates the lacrimal functional unit, which consists of meibomian glands, goblet cells, and um, <clears throat> the lacrimal gland itself. Here's a video showing the patient taking the nasal spray. You'll see that a spray is delivered one spray into each nostril. It's important to treat both sides of the nose as the pathways do cross over in the brain. The drug is a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor agonist that binds to ligand-gated ion channels, allowing depolarization of the nerve. This stimulus happens very rapidly, and you'll see in the next uh, screenshot here, we'll show you an actual patient being treated, but stimulates all three glands and cells responsible for natural tear production. If you watch the lower lid margin of this video, you'll see that after the patient delivers the therapy into the nasal cavity, the tear film starts to build up <clears throat> on the ocular surface. We can do this in a dose-dependent manner. And I'm going to show you data from three different uh, clinical trials today that we'll try to move through pretty quickly. So the first study is just understanding uh, this compound. One of the things that I think is important is the active ingredient in this compound is the same active ingredient as in the drug Chantix for smoking cessation, which is varenicline tartrate, a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor agonist. One of the nice things is this product has been delivered to over 20 million patients, so it's very rare that a product comes to market with such a long safety record. In this study, we looked at one oral pill of Chantix versus the intranasal delivery of OCO1. And what you'll see here is that the OCO1 nasal spray provides 13 times less bioavailability to the systemic circulation. So it's a very localized therapy. We don't have to worry about any of the uh, systemic side effects that one would assume with Chantix. The next study is a, our uh, onset one study. This is a randomized uh, mass placebo-controlled trial here in the United States where we looked at three different doses of OCO1 nasal spray. We're going to focus on 0.6 and 1.2 today. Primary endpoint here was Schirmer score. Primary symptom endpoint was eye dryness score. And what's unique about this product is I'm going to show you eye dryness data both in the normal clinic environment as well as in the controlled adverse environment chamber. On the left-hand side, you see mean change in Schirmer score at day 28. So a very rapid uh, response with the product, and you'll see statistically significant improvements in both 0.6 and 1.2. And on the right-hand side is a categorical change in Schirmer score uh, with what the FDA considers clinically meaningful, those patients achieving greater than 10 uh, millimeters in Schirmer score, and you'll see again 0.6 and 1.2, both statistically significant. On the left-hand side here, you see symptom scores, uh, and this is in the controlled adverse environment chamber. Again, uh, statistically significant reduction in symptom scores in both the 0.6 and 1.2. On the right-hand side, in the normal clinic, and you'll see uh, the 0.6 milligram per mil dose group was statistically significant, although the 1.2 milligram did not meet statistical significance. You'll see that uh, sample size here is quite small for dry eye trials, and I'm going to talk to you about the Onset 2 program that we're currently enrolling. Corneal staining was favorable in this trial, although this wasn't one of the pre-specified uh, primary uh, or secondary endpoints. You'll see that we had statistically significant improvement in total score, nasal score, and inferior score. And you'll see that the other uh, areas, central, superior, and temporal, all favored OCO1 nasal spray at day 28. Here's the safety and tolerability profile. The most common adverse event is a sneeze. These are event numbers here. So if at any point in time you sneezed over the course of 28 days, you were counted. These aren't 
uh, the, uh, sorry, these are patient numbers, not event numbers. And you'll see that in some uh, patients, we do see cough and irritation. This is mainly if the patient sprays the, the drug very deep into their nasal cavity. So this is a drug that only needs to be administered to the very anterior portion of the nose. This is um, the MYSTIC study. So we want to look at greater than 28 days of delivery of that 0.6 and 1.2 milligram uh, per mil dose groups. And you'll see here we had statistically significant improvements in Schirmer score at day 84 with twice daily dosing. And you'll see just how consistent that increase in uh, Schirmer score is over time, as early as day 7 and all the way out through day 84 of twice daily dosing. The safety profile here, uh, less adverse events than we see in the onset one study, although this is at a single center in Mexico City. Uh, and what you'll see here is uh, not to uh, interpret the data too deeply. Uh, patients in Mexico clearly complain to their physician a lot less than we do here in the United States. This is the onset uh, two phase three study. This is currently enrolling, and we will have uh, data at the end of Q2 of this year. You'll see a much larger study, 250 subjects per arm, and primary and secondary endpoints similar to what we saw in onset one. Thank you.